Our world is a puzzle. An infinite source of mystery, diversity and eclecticism. Yet, most of us experience it through two eyes. We see a world limited to our immediate surroundings, obscured by the veils of our inherent perceptions. This video defined my first company's vision. What I thought, at the time, would be a worldwide sensation. It was the first pluricultural artistic agency. I was proud. When the project failed, it was three years of hard work down the drain. My social identity with it. A part of my personality was so profoundly destabilized. It felt like my worst breakup. But since I never really had relationships, one can say it wasn't so unsettling. Just new. In any case, it's good I'm not here to talk to you about love. Since then, I became an exhibited artist, a philanthropy events manager, and a construction site engineer. You see, our work defines how we contribute to our community. The longer we've been at it, the more it feels like a purpose, a part of who we are. So when we lose it, our self-esteem goes down. We feel redundant and replaceable. So why? Why are we all passively watching a system about to overrun our evolutionary abilities of adaptation? Artificial intelligence is diminishing job opportunities day by day. I'll save you the readings assessing the impact of this fourth industrial revolution on our social ecosystems. But the underlying reality is stark and obvious. We're going to get screwed. No matter whether you're a lawyer, a cashier, a banker, a bricklayer, everyone's job is at risk. In Hefei, China, it takes 30 minutes for a doctor to run through 300 scan images. For an AI, it takes seconds, with 91% accuracy. It's better at spotting cancer cells than radiologists who've trained years for the same result. And now this guy. Now really? They want to take us at Olympics too? Come on. We're getting to a point where even AI researchers might soon be a thing of the past. Large American corporations are building AI which can build AI without human supervision? Almost funny, right? And scary at the same time. Slowly but surely, in every place of society, a human will be replaced by a machine. They can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's 8,700 hours a year. In comparison, if you work 40 hours a week, you top up at 1,800 hours a year. So one machine can effectively do the job of five humans. And that's without even counting the speed of their operational performance. Artificial intelligence is the fastest evolving technology which has ever existed. It's flexible, open source, self-optimizable, it's fostered by the research of the brightest minds on the planet, and its conception is based on the latest advances in neuroscience and psychology. Education, on the other hand, is a slow-paced, mechanistic system crafted to suit national interests of the past, and it's based on unproven ways of measuring intelligence. I mean, think about it for a second. We're teaching machines everything we know about the brain, and we're not adapting it to ourselves? How stupid must we be? Hey, let's teach machines everything we know about intelligence while we just sit there and wait for them to kick our asses. Come on. I'll get most of you are learning something at uni today. But how many have learned how to learn? How many have learned how our brain memorizes information? 
how to increase our attention span, how to adapt competences from one subject to the other. You see, most of us go on in life without the user manual to appreciate the magnificence of our intellect. We're all equipped with the most powerful processing system in the entire universe, yet no one teaches us how to use it. The rudimentary tools of cognition are all assumed acquired. It's like playing hockey without a stick, a puck, or skates, all the while being shouted at for not getting the thing right. You just get thrown in education from six years old, and they tell you to learn the goddamn thing. Our current system lacks three things. How to understand our brain as tools, how to understand ourselves as humans, our emotions and passions, and how to communicate effectively with one another. Thinking about thinking, that's called metacognition. Ever heard the world? No worries. I didn't either until a few weeks ago. And my whole talk is on it. I mean, sometimes it just feels so stupid. In any case, we need to go from a knowledge-based curriculum to an ability-based experience. We need to learn how to think practically, how to adapt our thinking to new situations, how to collaborate with one another. Because life is their sheer opposite of standardized examination. When I had my company, I learned more about the brain, people, and myself than during four years in a prestigious British institution. I learned more by doing than by thinking about doing. And that wasn't easy. I had to boss myself up because I only went to 30% of the lectures my parents paid for. I mean, don't tell them, please, but you all know college is pretty expensive. So I had to build up tools and frameworks to build up a certain work ethic and a discipline which would drive my company and my collaborators upwards. I'm still optimizing this learning toolbox, but I think its basic principles shall be shared with everyone. The idea is simple. Every job position can be simplified as a set of competences. Take photography, for example. You need curiosity, the exploration of reality from a multitude of angles to question perception. You need patience, waiting relentlessly for the perfect moment. You need risk-taking, venturing into unknown places, getting out of your comfort zone. And from then, each work experience becomes the referential of acquisition of a capacity, though one capacity is acquired in a specific framework. It doesn't mean its applications are constrained to its original context. Going back to my company and a specific expertise, branding identity and marketing, when you shape a company's vision, you do so by reframing reality, looking at its problems from different angles. Then, you build up an image which is going to carry its purpose effectively. Sounds familiar? Well, photography isn't too far. I then took up a position organizing the annual galas of a foundation in Paris, London, and New York. And I had zero experience in that field. I had no idea what to do, what the job was about. But by breaking the position into manageable subtasks, I was able to go through it. At the end, we managed to raise $1 million for disadvantaged children all around the world. That was my first encounter with project management, the ability to coordinate actions in time and space to achieve a designed intent. After that, I thought I was on top of my game. Since I managed events, I thought construction management wasn't too far off. 
Sometimes you can't believe how naively optimistic you are when in your 20s. So I changed industries once again. And I've since been coordinating the refurbishment of a spa for a palace in London. Has anyone dreamt about someone pursuing them? No matter how fast you run, how far, they always manage to catch you. Well, that's exactly how construction feels. Every time you achieve a milestone, there are yet thousands of others to happen. In electricity, plumbing, marble, paints. If you forget something or fuck it up, the whole sequence has to be reorganized. You lose time, money, and the pressure goes up. Does anyone know how a hammam works? How to light up an area or how to dispatch hot water to a tap? Well, I didn't either. You see, I had no idea about anything I was building. Yet, I have a master's in civil engineering. Amazing. So, I had to learn as I was going, making mistakes along the way. An expensive marble top from Zimbabwe, gone during demolition, was one of them. A pretty expensive mistake. And as if the project wasn't hard enough for a complete newbie, the hotel had to stay live with guest rooms and restaurants active during construction. And the spa was located right in the middle of the hotel, with no access to site whatsoever. So, I had to convince the hotel management that it was a good idea for us to break up open a massive hole in the ballroom floor where the queen learned to dance. The queen! Me, a man with zero construction experience, I had to tell our client how we were gonna break up open a massive hole in the ballroom floor and put a 17 meter long beam trolley on top of it. I was terrified. This project challenged me like never before, pushing me to the limits. I had to completely redefine past competences while acquiring new ones on the spot. I had to relearn how to learn. That's a blank that doesn't happen with robots. Sorry about this one. In any case, when I come back to it, um, and I know some of you might say, as Lauren said, I'm pretty young, even super young as well. Um, but neuroscience told me how to put all this together. By understanding how the brain works, how we learn, we're able to see life as a game. And just like in a game, you have to level up. Just like Mario eating mushrooms to power up his abilities, I'm not telling you to eat shrooms, though. Don't get the message wrong. We all start in life from a specific level of competences, dependent on luck and mental equity, a learning toolbox of our own from which we can pick and choose a set of cognitive qualities specific to the task at hand. Just like a construction toolbox, where you have a knife, a hammer, and a drill, each item is designed with a specific action in mind. When you learn how to use one, you can reuse it in a similar setting or adapt it to a completely new situation. Combine all together, these tools enable you to build a house or a spa. Artificial intelligence pushes us to revisit our understanding of intelligence of what it means to be human. We all the miraculous outcome of 3.8 billion years of evolution, the most advanced beings in the known universe. So, if we are to avoid this black mirror dystopia which awaits, we must start looking at ourselves through the lens of metacognition. This concept of transferability of competences across different work configurations mesmerizes me. And I'm still contemplating the immense beauty of 
reframing abilities to context, of altering intelligence with intent. And I think you should too. Each one of us has their own personal tree of competences. Deep in our mind lies a gold mine of adaptable tools. All we need to do is learn to be human. Thank you. Vincent Fault.